Oh, you know about Uwe Boll? No. The Why director that did the happen? director that fights all the people who makes fun of his movies. No. Oh, I no no. The nigga who made, he made like fucking evil uh, the fucking Dead Island shit movie and shit. Ah oh, no, I have no idea. We'll watch that after this. I didn't even know Dead Island had a movie. Bro, he like Uwe Boll gets really upset when people talk shit about his movie. He's like, where are your movies? And they're like, I don't have a movie, but I will make a better movie than that. And he's like, all yeah, right, uh, that's a fight. He's like, all right, um. Come, come, and I'll box you, stupid. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And if you say, and if you say, yeah, he thinks he can beat you up, he'll do it. He'll really fly you out and beat you up. <laughs> Dude. All right, we'll play this We should just take, take that on. Take him on, make a I'll, video. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> fuck we'll with Bowl up, bro. We'll I'll fuck him in. up, bro. We'll I'll make fun of his movie right now. I'll make fun of his movie right now. Right, I'll send fuck it to that you, open send up. It to you, send it. Let's see <laughs> we can't watch it on stream, dude. Oh, no, 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 hey, no, but no, we, no, could, no. we could watch it off stream and make a review about it. It'd be I'm funny as fuck. This movie would be terrible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But play this. Play this. Play this. Did you send this to me? Yeah. Oh, wait. I have it on the screen. All right. Ready? Yeah. Whatever did happen to the pink man? Yeah, bro, deleted, deleted his channel. That's the original source. Aw, oh, crap. I really like this video, and Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, this nigga's gonna take advantage of the missing link. Hey, folks. Larson Halleck here, and while we all miss the pink man dearly, somebody has to carry the torch of fighting BS martial arts, and I am heeding the call to adventure. God help us. Pink man had a great video. Nigga, imagine coming up on, like, so a duet before people even knew, Jesus, like, the rock like, imagine being, like, the, in the origin of streaming, and being able to be like, oh, yeah, I got, like, fucking 50,000 views the other day, and niggas couldn't tell you that you did it because there's, like, proof. Nah. Like niggas would come in, <laughs> niggas would come in and fight it, and be like, "Oh yeah, I'm 22 and 0. I know jujitsu. I trained to Brazil, and you just couldn't Google them. <laughs> niggas just niggas are just lying. Niggas were getting on the cover of magazines <laughs> saying that they could do backflips and kick niggas in the dark, and people just had to buy that. Oh. You just had to be like, "All right, I guess. All right, like, 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 fuck it, I guess. And you never had to fight anybody to prove it. Man, dude, that's how we no, got fucking uh, the sword people, fight. That's how this guy got stabbed, bro. Yeah, people, <laughs> people were like, oh yeah, you ever, you ever, you ever wrestled this nigga? Oh nah, you know he's could just come back off an of injury. Injury from fucking what? But like, but like, that's how you roll. You it's keep like, like that. It's like, uh, it's like wrestling, but they're like bringing the lore out into like IRL. Nah, see, you see, know? see. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. With wrestling, you still gotta do a backflip and land on a nigga. Oh my god. Man. You still gotta get hit in the face with a chair sometimes. You know, these niggas ain't gotta do none of that. They just gotta <laughs> lie and buy belts and buy a gear every day. Like this. <laughs> this. All right, let's watch this. Let's watch this. Yeah, like, oh, Tory story. Tory story. That's kind of awkward. Perhaps I should refer to him by his actual name of Ralph Bartle. <laughs> well, I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> just here. Got a fake so name. let's start from the beginning. Bartle. Ralph Bartle, not to be confused <laughs> with the CEO of Travel Zoo, was a man from Torrance, California, born around 1970 or so, who dreamed of great things. A man who wanted to be somebody and live the good life. You know, he looked like he Anthony Fantano. Actually, you know, work hard and earn those great things the honest way. No, Is that you say that because he's bald, bro? And a mustache and shit. Preferably in a new frontier of a field that nobody knew much about and even less people were willing to do background checks on. A field like MMA. Oh, wait, no, actually, not even MMA. NHB fighting. <laughs> this is before the phrase mixed martial arts even existed. No holds barred fighting. A field that was newly emergent oh, in the early 90s. When niggas were wearing whatever they were wearing. Safety equipment. A field that was, to be quite honest, absolutely full of paunchy, bug-eyed lunatics, steroided up brutes, and out. little bug-eyed, oh steroided up Jesus freaks that all had that same dream of faking it until you make it and becoming the ultimate fighter. Ralph Bartle was not a fighter. No, he wasn't satisfied with merely making his own martial arts pedigree or out and out making up his own martial art. He made up his own fights and tournaments. To quote Joe Rogan, like he would sing Ralph and, like, told disturb. him that he had been invited to a secret you know, a kumite band, like a out in the woods band. in a national park. He would have to like leave for a few days. Drums he Creed. a suspicious <laughs> amount of camping gear and a duffel bag. Two days later, he came out of the woods with an empty duffel bag and a suspiciously duffel bag-sized trophy that he won for the kumite. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. But that now, Frank Dukes did that shit. That's Frank Dukes lying about, about the kumite. Sport, probably played at doing a kumite at some point in their life. How does this tie into MMA, and when does the sex and murder happen? Well, remember how I said that MMA was a controversial and shocking thing in the 90s? And how Ralph wanted to desperately be somebody? Well, here's how that intersects. With the burgeoning of the internet, 
and very loose standards for internet journalism. <laughs> Not like now, am I right? With loose standards of journalism, sporting websites were looking for anybody who knew anything about this crazy, greased-up man grappling. And suddenly, out of the mists, came a dapper malandro named Rafael Torre, a BJJ black belt trained by his father, and an ex-Navy SEAL trained by Uncle Sam. Not only that, he oh had an inch beat record himself, of 14 seal. wins and zero losses. Uh, somewhat Fucking belied Mark by his Wahlberg pasty and unscarred nigga. face, but those fights were in small-time shows and they went unrecorded, so nobody asked any questions. Now this is oh, yeah, I had a bunch of fights at fight my old school. <laughs> just, just let it ride. No one even questioned it, bro. They just let that shit yeah. ride. No, there was no footage, bro. Like nobody filmed fights back then, so it's like, oh yeah, I had a bunch of fights in my old school where my girlfriend goes still. I oh yeah, asked trust him me, to brother. Do a backflip, bro. I would have been like, dude, <laughs> just do a backflip. Oh, bro, this is fighting. Push me in the face. Yeah, Show yeah. me a kick right now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> kick me in the leg, bro. I want to see. Yeah, dude. Straight up. Nine is early two thousands. He's a MMA Navy SEAL. So Show me some. Uh, show me a medal, nigga. Fuck you. <laughs> but you don't feel comfortable saying that, you know? Nah, true. Known as the dark age of the sport. Led by politicians like the songbird himself, John McCain, UFC, and other respectable <laughs> NHB leagues like Battlecade, <clears throat> sorry, were banned from John network McCain. television and most major venues, leading to many shows having to be held in dubious venues like FSU states and Indian reservations and even high school gyms and nightclubs. If you look at the records of fighters that were fighting back then, many of their fights are murky and barely recorded fights against no names that can't even be found on video. Hell, there's a solid block of UFC events that are still not on video to this day. Nobody thought there would be any need to record them, because nobody thought that the UFC would stand the test of time. Everybody thought that it was going to be some silly bit of yeah. 90s extra. Everybody thought it, they thought the UFC was like slam ball. Curtain yeah, haircuts like and fanny packs and uh, soap shoes. Like so the point shit. is, like, oh, yeah, it is in fact plausible like that Rafael Torre could have had a bunch of fights that were unrecorded. I mean, at least he gave a somewhat realistic number, unlike the guys at the first UFC events. And he seemed to know what he was talking about in regards to BJJ, yeah. so he got lots of writing gigs. Indeed, you can go to SureDog or The Underground or any MMA site that was around in the early 2000s, and his name will be on lots of the bylines. But lots here is those. where the cracks begin to form. Yeah, was, Throughout this whole time, Rafael was touting his BJJ mastery and Navy SEAL fighting skills. This attracted Sheikh bin Zayed Al Nayan of Abu Dhabi, the biggest promoter of MMA and martial arts in the Middle East, and a BJJ black belt himself. He invited Rafael to the one and only Abu Dhabi Combat Club, the most prestigious no gi grappling show in the world. Not as a mere reporter, but as a contestant. To my bag, you know what? Right? Fly out, he, bro. Flew him out. Like, yeah, you're a black belt. You write a lot of articles. You you comment on a lot of shit. I'm a black belt. I have a lot of money. I sponsor mixed martial arts. I'm trying to get mixed martial arts to be a real thing. Come out to Abu Dhabi and kick it with me. We roll. Let's go, dude. That's the, yeah. Let's go, right? You right? That's Rafael a big move. By Bo Hirschberger in less than a minute. Then oh, footage dude. came out of him rolling with his students and hitting pads. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was clearly dude. not a black belt or a Navy yeah, SEAL. Dude. Well, I think ah, look at him throw that ball. punch. Run Yo. it back, run it back. Look at him throw that fucking punch. One and only. <laughs> that Abu soft Porter, ass hook. As a contestant, oh, no. Raphael was submitted by Bo Hirschberger in less than a minute. Then footage came right, out of right, him right, rolling right. with his students whoop, and hitting whoop, pads, whoop, and uh, whoop, he was clearly whoop. not a black belt or a Navy SEAL. Well, kick. I think it would be unfair to say he has no skill that at all. Loopy He's not as good as he claims to be. His kicks look okay, but his punches are loopy and sloppy. Yeah, and his grappling yeah. is loopy lax. Fuck. With his submission holds clearly not putting enough pressure on the joints. I mean, for God's sake, he literally I has his leg knock him out. guy's leg while doing a heel hook. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> and then he was invited to roll with an actual BJJ black belt, that being Eddie Bravo. And Eddie just gobbled him up again and again and again. For those of you not familiar he with a minute and under Bravo, a minute. he's a bit of a weirdo. Uh, he's into, like, you know, weirdo conspiracies and stuff. But he is a brilliant jiu-jitsu man, and his instincts were triggered instantly. Oh, yeah, free Eddie Bravo, free Eddie Bravo. Tori he's in a cult by mistake. Awkwardly what? In that conversation For real? Went, yeah, yeah, Eddie Bravo got fin Okay, so the nigga that used to be Justin Bieber's manager, he's like low key started like some fucking wisdom cult and he became Eddie Bravo's manager and then he finessed him into like believing everything in the cult and like he became his trainer and shit and Eddie Bravo hasn't won a fight since. What? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. No, <laughs> no, shortly <laughs> after, he decided about to prove his detractors wrong by engaging in a real fight with Ioka Tiaru oh, Rafa, oh, yeah, he came to fight. Seven in February 2001. He came out of retirement to was called Wet and Wild, and that subtitle was unusually literal as this... Pause, pause. Why do you think this event was called Wet and Wild? Who guesses? Why do you think this event is nicknamed Wet and Wild? 
Is are they gonna be in a ring? That's like a pool. Okay, what's your next guess? That they're sweaty. <laughs> okay, this event was. Remember they said they had to hold them in random places, right? Yeah. This event was in somebody's backyard, and it was raining. Nah. <laughs> let it rock. Let it ride. Let it ride. Yeah. Thunderstorm. And all the fighters were slipping and sliding around like a bunch of goofs. <laughs> Somewhat suspiciously, Yoko Tianu was also one of Rafael Tori's students, and he had a record of 0 and 1 going into the fight. Anyway, the fight was quite obviously choreographed. As you can see, they throw a few punches, and then Rafael just kind of <laughs> flops onto his back, and Tianu gets Wait, into his back. guard. Look how, they look how much face between that punch. Fuck? Look how, look how much face between that punch. Anyway, the fight was he's, quite he fucking paid for this nigga to throw it. As you can see, Look, look how much space between the punch, bro. Look. This one comes, look, this one comes, this one comes, wait, watch. He didn't even punch him. He, he never touches him. <laughs> He's already fucking. Throw a few punches, and then Raphael just kind of flops onto Dude, his Dude, they were back like, okay, what do we do? Gets into his guard. They roll around for a bit, and Raphael puts on a knee bar and doesn't even fully extend the guy's leg. To nobody's surprise, it later transpired that Raphael <laughs> paid the guy to take a dive. Well, there's How much do you think he paid him? What about the sex and the murder? After his like dubious band? fighting career began and ended. About band, 500. That's also his. Actually, bro, he probably just gave that nigga free classes because that's one of his jujitsu nah. students. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> so you got, Group you got sex two free parties. Lessons. You know, the you typical journalist thing. And it was at one of these parties that he met an Angelina Richards. Raphael and Angelina were doing this the nigga out here having while. sex parties. Lust turned to love and love turned to mad love. For you see, Angelina Richards was a Mrs. Richards. She was a married woman, Ooh, married to her husband, Brian he creeping Richards. in the streets. Oh, she also had two children, by the way, Bryce and Kendall, because, you know, this story wasn't sorted enough. Their marriage was strained for whatever reason. Uh, I mean, I'm looking through the public records on the case. Apparently, Brian was involved in some kind of insurance scam. Maybe that caused their marriage to be strained. I don't know. Oh, she married to a scammer. And she's Brian married to a scammer him. cheating with another scammer. She got yeah. a type. She got yeah, a type. She all she attracted yeah, niggas that ain't about shit. Fake ass niggas. And she going from one scammer to the least. This nigga was doing fraud and getting some bread. She's scamming on a nigga that ain't even in a popular field. This is MMA in the 90s. Ain't no money in that shit right now. And a $1 million nationwide life insurance policy with his wife and children as the beneficiaries. In August of that year, the affair between Angelina and Raphael began. As I said before, lust became love, love became mad love, and mad love became the plot of double indemnity. You yeah, know, I've always felt that group sex would be really awkward and sweaty with all those heaving naked bodies and stuff. Oh. I can't be comfortable with all the excess body heat. Now bite me. Yes, just like that classic film, the lovers planned on murdering the husband and getting rich off that insurance money. Except in the movie, Walter Neff was an insurance man himself, so he at least had a reason to think that he could get away with it. Yo, These I got two the camera clients working. are a fraudulent, ethnically confused really? journalist and a bored housewife who does orgies. Oh boy, this is gonna be a clusterfuck. And it was. I got the camera Rafael working. Tori's contact to somebody who might be able to do the job. They showed it on mine. Gerald Sturbent, a pro MMA fighter and a former Marine sniper who also had a few run with the law. He offered 10000 to kill Brian Richards. Strabent, quite obviously. How do, how do I get... To, first, let's, let's just go here really quick. I'm gonna click this. Cut I think you gotta click... Slide. Yeah, I think you gotta show it. Or you gotta send me, like... A code. I got... I have... It says camera slot link. So let me go to my OBS. I think you, I can just do it through here, through the stream to, together. I think you can too. It says preview stream output and it and it comes out. I'm looking at it. It says it says group capture appearance. Yeah, I think you can show me, bro. Oh, I gotta add this shit to my to the OBS. That's why. Yeah, add me up, bro. Right, click the little dots and they'll give you my yeah, slot yeah, link. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it. We I got lit. It. I got we it. lit. We lit. I got it. Oh, we're official. We're official. Browser. I'm gonna call it. I got all my fucking shit on my bed. Twitch together. <laughs> You there, but I gotta move this. Open performance done. Okay, we're lit. We got it here. I'm gonna check out this stream right now. Yeah, that's good enough. Fuck it. Every time I come back to your fucking stream, it's a it's an ad. Yeah, the same thing <laughs> happened with you. <laughs> yeah, we gotta check out. We gotta house get to a house. House orgies. Oh boy, this is okay. a clusterfuck. <laughs> and it was Rafael Torres. So 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 this nigga. Wait wait pause pause pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So this nigga is. Lying about his career, staged the fight, start going to weird sex parties, met a shorty, found out that she married with kids, and then, and then, 
And then that's where we at right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, ready, ready. Well, to do the job that he knew, Gerald Strabent, a pro MMA fighter and a former Marine sniper who also had a few run-ins with the law. He offered 10000 to kill Brian Richards. Strabent Wait, so quite this nigga, hold on, pause, refused. pause. So Gerald Strabent is the nigga he pretending to be. This is, <laughs> he a Marine sniper, MMA fighter. This is exactly who he yeah. been lying to people about being. This is who he is. This is uh, this the archetype, You've right? It's the blueprint. Job, you gotta do it yourself. They contrived to get Mr. Richards to Raphael's gym. Oh, yeah, I should mention that the lease for this gym and a $10,000 loan for the gym were co signed by Angelina herself without her husband's consent. Oh Brian God. went to the gym and Raphael slapped on a rear naked choke and strangled him with it. Well, this is not the right. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get the other dude to kill him and he was like, nah, I'm not like that. I'm not giving you 10, I'm not taking 10,000. In order to catch a body for you, and he like fuck it, I'll choke I'll him out myself. myself. <laughs> I'm gonna do this shit myself. Here. I know jujitsu. What are you doing that for? What are you honking the horn for? Bro, imagine going to imagine going to confront this nigga and him just like jumping wow, behind. Life imitates art. Presumably very happy that he had finally won an actual fight for the first time in his life. And Rafael he murdered that Angelina nigga. And started living the good life. They bought a vacation home in Cancun, Mexico. Raphael started to drive Brian's truck around town. The small town. <laughs> Yo, that's yeah, devious. Brian that's devious. That's lascivious, nigga. That's crazy. When Raphael abandoned it in a supermarket. Oh my god. You know, I'm not a master what? criminal myself, but it astounds me that someone could be this dumb. <laughs> Raphael thought quick. He knew he had to get an alibi. Jerry Strabent, the guy who he already <laughs> asked to kill Brian Richards and refused. Guess who testified against Raphael in court? Oh, I would also like to point out bro. that Gerald Strabent Look. has, among other things, molested an underage no girl. Way. Oh, wait. I want to say this. I want to say this. I want to say this. Yeah. I want to say this. If you ask somebody to catch a body for you and they say no, no. you have to kill them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's who's going to tell on you. They said no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm hey, I'm saying I can't kill him, but if you kill him, I won't say Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Cuz that, that's the first <laughs> after you snitch, you got to get rid of that guy. I'm sorry. Girl and has a justifiable homicide on his record. This story is too much even for him. Oh, whoa, so that nigga the rapist Corey and the murderer already. Him, but that it was spur of the moment self defense. The nigga Gerald Strabent is a rapist and a murderer. So fuck that dude. I'm sorry, don't come for me, Joe Strabin. You will definitely win the murder off in that one. But, fuck that dude. <laughs> oh my God, when Brian dude. found out they were having an affair. This is despite the fact that, you know, Gerald Strabent was on record to point out that this was clearly premeditated. Shit. Tory was sentenced to life in prison. <laughs> Angelina Richards was found guilty of aiding and abetting murder. Under California law, that lands you up to six years in prison, so I will assume she got that. And so ends the saga of Ralph Bartle, Raphael Torrey, or whatever his name is. A shining example of a clod being in the right place at the right time. Successfully bullshitting his way through the proverbial Wild West where nobody could possibly do a background check. And a man who went for the easy money and <laughs> lost everything. I'm Larson Halleck, Bro, and man, it turns out you're not smarter than everyone, Raphael. And just a little tallest. ruining it for a bitch that, that, that you watch get knocked down by six niggas in a room, bro. He Crazy. met her at an orgy and wiped her, gang. That's crazy, bro. He caught a body for a tree she met at an orgy, folk. See? That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's and crazy. now, a world and like, he not even like a regular Hello. body. He ain't like he went out and shot the, the man. Gentlemen? He of choked. Of course you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching. Yo, was in the bro. chat, bro. Here's how you can. Goody. Rose is in the chat. What's good? What's good? 301 Smokey. Hey, Rose in the chat. What's good, gang? Hold on. Bro, I'm finna find something, though. I'm over that one.